Welcome everyone to the 2024 USA Gymnastics Women's Collegiate National Championship, where for the first time ever, it is being hosted at Hollinger Fieldhouse, home of the Westchester Rams, one of the six teams that we will see throughout the two sessions today, vying for those coveted four spots to lead them into team finals tomorrow night. I am Annie Johnson, and I'm pumped to see all the gymnastics here today, especially with the number of program records that we've already seen this season. We should be looking forward to some big gymnastics. I am just as excited to be joined here today with former Georgia gym dog, All-American Sydney Sneed. This is going to be an action-packed day as Texas women's Yale and Air Force hope to nudge their other competitors from a spot in the finals tomorrow night. We have a lot of great gymnastics ahead, but first we wanted to thank our sponsors for today's competition. Thank you to CIC for Life and Annuities, a full service brokerage agency providing products, marketing, and underwriting support for financial and insurance professionals. Their vision is to improve the lives of others through life insurance solutions and by providing leading insurance opportunities through products, marketing, underwriting, and case management support for financial professionals. Also, big thank you to Lafleur's Gymnastics. Open since 1980, Lafleur's prides itself on running one of the best gymnastics-only training facilities in the Tampa and St. Pete area. Former Alabama competitor Melody, along with Mike, former Indiana gymnast, wishes all these athletes the best of luck this weekend. Along with these athletes tonight, DGS Gym Supply strives for perfection and has done so for 30 years. The largest gymnastics supply company in the U.S. and official grip supplier for both the USA Gymnastics men's and women's national teams. Thank you to Synergy Gymnastics in Malvern, Pennsylvania, founded and led by women who believe in the power of female unity, committed to building a culture of teamwork, caring, respect, empathy, and energy and grit. Not qualities that we will be shy of here today in the competition with all these amazing athletes we have to look forward to. Synergy wishes the best of luck to all these competitors as well. The Palace, a one-of-a-kind bowling alley and entertainment center offering fun for the entire family, which includes a full service bar, snack bar, leagues, parties, and a plethora of other activities. Be sure to reserve a lane after this meet. I know your competitive juices might be flowing, so be sure to get out on the bowling alley. 
Lorenzo's Steak and Hoagies, known as the big meat on Market Street. However, with this weekend coming to the town, we might have a bigger meat happening down the street. Home of the famous number one pound cut to order hoagies and cheese steaks, as well as the 14 ounce hand cut ribeye steaks, they are guaranteed to have something for everyone. I might just need to uh, take a snack break already in this broadcast with all of these amazing sponsors that we have. And last but not least, for those in the area, Chester County Tourism welcomes those to Brandy Wine Valley, the heart of America's garden capital, where springtime is bliss. Stroll through lush gardens in full bloom from artfully curated spring blooms at Longwood Garden to natural arboretums bursting with azaleas and wildflowers to every color. This just may be the perfect place after today's heated competition that we can expect with some tight gymnastics and scores today. Just wanted to thank all of our sponsors for allowing today's competition to take place. And we really appreciate their support in today's Verdius broadcast. Let's get ready for some big gymnastics. Texas Women's, Cornell, and Air Force. Who is it that's going to be competing in tomorrow's competition? And who is going to be ending their 2024 campaign today? Let's get it started. Sydney, what can viewers expect? It's a long weekend ahead. What can they expect from the athletes here today? Yeah, well, Annie, I think there's going to be so much excitement and energy flowing just throughout the arena and just this entire weekend. We have the first session that's about to kick off. These teams are just going to be, they're going to have so much fuel. They're ready to go. And so I think we're going to see some really good gymnastics and some consistent. It's postseason. Anything can happen, but it's down to the wire here now. So we may see a little nerves here and there in the beginning, but I'm excited for a really tight competition this session and tonight later on in the second session. We are going to toss it over for the PA announcer for introductions, and we will be right back to Hollinger Fieldhouse, where USAG Collegiate National Championships are taking place. The top two scoring teams from today will join the top two teams from this evening's session in the team final tomorrow at 7 p.m. Also completing today is a squad of individual event qualifiers from multiple teams aiming to earn a top five event placement in order to advance to Sunday's individual event finals. Team competitors are also eligible to qualify for these top five spots. Both of today's sessions also serve as the individual all-around finals. Session one and two will feature all-around competitors from teams as well as individual qualifiers. The top scorers from both sessions will be announced and the winner recognized on Sunday following the event finals. At the end of today's meet, we will announce the top two teams moving on to the team finals as well as the top five athletes on each event from this session, including fifth place ties that will move on to the individual event finals. And now let's meet the gymnasts competing in this afternoon's session one. First, from Cornell University, a freshman from New York City, Ali Rothstein. A senior from Colorado Springs, Colorado, Eva Wright. A sophomore from Edison, Illinois, number three, Cammy Whitaker. A sophomore from Louisville, Colorado, Gordon Shambo. from Thomasville, Pennsylvania, Regina Horton. A senior from Wardell, New Jersey, Alexandra Piana. A senior from Wilmette, Illinois, Rachel Zunn. A junior from Tampa, Florida, Maddie Sakowski. A sophomore from Schenectady, New York, Michaela DeFrancisco. A senior from Western Florida, Melanie Stone. A senior from Rye, New York, Kevin Welsh. A freshman.
Mason from Rancho, Mission Viejo, California, Avery Dion. A freshman from Fremont, California, Natalia Tehrani. A senior from Bankton, Illinois, Calista Bree. A freshman from Versailles, Kentucky, Jersey Moylan. A junior from Baltimore, New York, Sydney Beers. A sophomore from Newton, Georgia, Michaela Burton. And a senior from Cornwall, Vermont, Eva Fair. Competing as an all-rounder and rotating with Cornell from Talladega is a freshman from Baltimore, Maryland, Kirsten Jackson. And now for Texas Women's University. Michigan, uh, Jamie Ott. 
Welcome back into Westchester, Pennsylvania, where the USAG National Collegiate Championships are happening. We are taking a look here at the order of today's competition. Vault will be starting with the individual competitors that have qualified based off of their national qualifying score. Cornell will be starting on bars, Air Force starting on beam, and Texas women will be following on floor. Just a reminder that all teams will be rotating in a Olympic order, so vault, bars, beam, floor. For those of you that may be new to Verdius, make sure that you check out a multitude of features. Verdius is a pioneer with some of the services that it offers for scoring, and you can see here that it offers individual streams. So be sure to follow your team with those individual streams by selecting those events in those boxes that you are seeing on your screen, as well as there will be a quad view to all the teams that are at once broadcasting on. Again, welcome back into Hauling Your Fieldhouse, where we are going to take a look at each individual team. So starting off strong, we have our USAG individuals. They're gonna be starting on vault, which in my opinion is one of the best rotations. You get the actual Olympic order of starting on vault, getting to end on floor. Just such a talented lineup you can see all the way through um, Ava Kelly down to Lexi Breacher. And one thing to point out is that although they won't count as a team score altogether, they are still going to take the top five scores from each event in the session and they can qualify for Sunday event final. So we will be keeping a close eye on all of these individuals and athletes as well. But again, just to keep in a reminder that even though they'll have an event total, they will not be counting towards a team. Heading over to our first team introduction, Cornell starting off on the bars. This event isn't their highest scoring event, but it may be advantageous if they are able to start consistent, as that may just propel them forward throughout the game. Cornell is led by Melanie Hall, who has seven Ivy Classic titles to her name and has been the head coach since 2021. She is definitely no stranger to this program as she has been a coach now for 30 years at this prestigious institution and has led them to great heights and continues to do so as you've seen from the success this season. Former gymnast at Radford, joined by her assistant coach, former University of Illinois Chicago gymnast, Mike Brackman. As I mentioned, she continues to propel this team to new heights, as you can see in that team high score of a 195.025, which is a program record that they actually accomplished at their last home meet of the season, which goes to show that this team has continued to grow throughout this season, and we can expect big things here today. We'll take a look up at the lineup, starting off with Melanie Stone. And one person to keep your eye on, not only on this event, but throughout the competition, is Sydney Beers. She's just a junior and is competing in the all-around. She holds the Cornell floor record, and so expect big things by her leading this team. Also, the all-around competitor that will be joining Cornell is Kirsten Johnson from Talladega. Now, this is a name to keep your eye out for. Kirsten is a very talented gymnast and is hoping to go out there and hit all four events. And Cornell has really adopted her into their program and is treating her just like one of their own teammates, which should be fun to watch. Taking a look at BEAM, we have Air Force starting off here. As you can see, the coaches Jennifer Green, Brittany McClure, and Anique Greenier. Such a strong coaching staff that they have. They've really done big things this season. BEAM is not an easy, event, an easy event to start on, and a lot of people like to say it's the make or break event. So I'm really excited to see how they hit the ground running. And again, BEAM floor, vault bars, that's a strong lineup. Could be some nerves on beam, but Air Force is absolutely capable of taking advantage of the opportunity starting on this event. 
One thing too to point out is their high 195.65. What a huge score. Something that they're gonna wanna match, if not beat today, um, is gonna be really big. And their NQS, a 195.15, that just shows the consistency as well that they've had throughout this entire season. And one thing to also look out for is that they're really capable of starting off strong with a 49, a 49 plus on this event, which would be a nice start for them to try and claim this title. Somebody to watch out for, Maggie Slife, only a freshman, but has just been making her own way through this Air Force team in this season so far. I'm really looking forward to watching her. Just a beautiful gymnast to watch all around, but again, they're gonna wanna start off strong with Claire Wallace and go all the way down their lineup and continue to build with their score. That's what they're gonna be looking at today. Uh, as well, the individual Lola Sepulveda from Bridgeport, another really consistent athlete. I'm super excited to watch her as well. She just has such big gymnastics and we'll take a look at some unique and cool skills that she does along the way throughout this entire competition. So she will be one to keep an eye out on as well. in the session one of today, Texas Women's University, starting off on floor, a standout event for them. They have achieved a new program floor record this season of 49.375. And every athlete that you have seen in here today in their lineup has scored a 9.85 plus this season. So expecting to go out with a really high score and keep that momentum throughout the day. You can see here the coaches coached by Lisa Maurerman in her 20th season with this program and being a head coach since 2011. Also with associate head coach Kristen Harold and Matthew at the Grand Prix as the assistant, both having coached since 2022. You can see their high score is 196.275. Texas Women's does take the first seed in session one, second seed overall when considering both sessions, just trailing behind Lindenwood with a 197. 0.075, who you will see in session two later today. As we take a look at the lineup for floor today, some people to take to make sure that you're keeping an eye on throughout the competition is going to be starting off with Emily Sticks, but really Daisy Woodring, I am very excited to see how she comes out um, and performs today. Also rotating with Texas Women's, the all-around competitor from Fisk sophomore, Morgan Price. And Morgan is a standout competitor. She has an all-around high score of a 39.4, and I know that she is looking to hit that all-around and end up on top this weekend. You can see our quad view here as competition has gotten started. We can see Cornell already kicking us off on the bar competition. Texas women down in the right bottom corner on floor. Individuals up on the left top corner as well as Air Force starting off on the beam. Air Force getting started with the hit beam routine. That was Clara Wallace there on the beam. Emily Six competing here on floor for Texas Women's in the bottom right hand corner. Ava Kelly led off the individuals on vault and Melanie Stone on the bars picked off things for Cornell. I think it's important to notice too, with the first event, you have so much energy just bottled up and you have so much adrenaline coming into a postseason competition like this. I'm sure they're just wanting to get all that out, but also it's so important to just focus and have that mindset of what event that you're on, right? Because floor, there's gonna be so much energy, so much tumbling around, whereas beam is a lot more calm and you're artistic and you're flowing and you have timing on everything. And so that's something too, too, that people might not realize, you know, in these competitions like this. 
And it's funny because Texas women's head coach Lisa Bowerman said that their focus this weekend is to outperform what they have been doing, specifically on floor and beam, which I thought was a very unique focus. A lot of teams focus is on stick or the little details. But at this point in the season, the gymnastics ability is there. And so to go out and have fun and put on a performance, not only for the crowd, but for yourself and your team, what better event to start on than the floor if that is your goal? Absolutely. I love, too, that you said the gymnastics is there. At this point in the season, they're on autopilot. So you're not you're really looking at getting maybe one tenth better execution, a little bit cleaner. But I do love that. She said outperform. It's a good word. And talk about momentum. The a lot of these teams here had a few week break from their conference championships. How do you attack a postseason meet a few weeks after your last meet, considering spring break occurred in there for a lot of these athletes as well? That's a great question. I think a lot of people tend to forget that they're college students too, right? And they have spring break going on or they're seeing their friends do all these other things that they're not able to do. They're working hard in the gym to be able to compete at their best at competitions like this. So. They have just so much hard work and discipline to be able to, for weeks at a time of not competing, still stay in that season and in their bubble and keep that focus. It really is difficult. And so, so far they're all doing a great job. You wouldn't even tell, be able to tell that they, you know, skipped a week or two. Libby Allen, the junior from Southern Connecticut State University there on the ball in your left screen. In the bottom left screen on beam we just saw a huge punch front that was one of the highest i've seen on beam it looked like she was doing it on the floor well done ellen gosay for texas women's down on the floor and clara wallace wraps up her beam routine for air force There's gonna be a lot of back and forth because we do have four screens. So Annie and I are gonna be doing our best to go back and forth and not talk over each other during the broadcast. Makes it more fun though, it's louder with more going on at once. I used to always love the postseason meets. I just felt like the crowd was louder. There was everyone going at once, not like a dual meet where you have to wait and there's no quiet periods is what I like to say. And you can see that excitement that you were talking about sitting out on the floor as she goes and gives her coach a hug. And hopefully, despite it being virtual, the crowd will still be able to feel the energy from the four split screen. I know just the cheering in the background gets me excited. Absolutely, I love being able to feel like we're right there in front of them watching all this awesome gymnastics. Sophia Rucker there with the Yurchenko tuck full, slight step forward, but a great, routine for the individual. Her vault season high was a 9.775. Should land somewhere around there. Up in the top right corner on bars, we have Natalie Terraney. We went 9.25. Sydney Beer is up now for Cornell on the bars in that top right screen. A big name for Cornell. And a little bit extra pressure for Sydney Beers on bars following a 9.25. Really going to be looking to continue to build these scores. And if anyone can do that, it is her. She opens with a huge Takacha. Oh, shoot. Unfortunately, I hate to see those falls especially this early on in the lineup and with this early on in your rotation, not what they were hoping for. Okay. Up on beam now, Kylie Green for Air Force, as well as Sophia Isbell for Texas Women's on the Floor. We saw that switch leap to switch leap combination on balance beam, which is really difficult, but was done very well. 
a lot of combinations throughout this theme routine from Kylie Green. Sydney Beers on bars is an all around competitor. So that will definitely contribute to her all around score, but still manages to finish strong with a stuck landing. And that goes to show how much of a competitor she is to be able to finish that strong. I always like to say sticks are contagious. And if you look down in the bottom screen on beam, we saw Kylie Green stick her round off one and a half dismount as well. So nice routine done by her. They absolutely are. Kylie City on vault for Southern Connecticut. Over on floor, you saw that one and a half punch front layout. It's a really cool and unique angle from the floor too because we are able to see if the gymnasts goes a little bit crooked to the left, a little bit crooked to the right. The judges obviously can't see that as well being on the sides, but we do have a good view of that. So we'll be able to tell. And just for a reminder, there are six athletes that contribute to the score, but only five of those six athlete scores do count towards the team total for that event. So despite having a fall, as long as the rest of the lineup can come up and attack the event, and not be shy of hitting handstands and just going for it, they should be able to recover just fine. With that as well comes, if there is a fall in the lineup, then the rest of your lineup has that extra layer of pressure, which again, these athletes are more than capable of being able to handle that, but you do see even more pressure because it is a postseason meet and it's they're trying to qualify to get into championships. So something else to keep in mind as the competition continues on. And one thing I do want to point out about this Cornell Bars squad is that it is a very underclassman heavy team. I know that the coaches spent a lot of time recruiting bar talent, and you can see the bar talent definitely by the huge release moves that we'll see, and a stuck vault by Brianna Dorr for Southern Connecticut. But just because it is very underclassman heavy, um, they're still getting those reps, but we'll see how they handle the pressure that you were talking about. Up in the top right on bars, we just saw that Ginger release move. It was really nicely done. She's doing a great job flowing through this routine. Addie Rothstein, so far so good. Looking for a stick on that double layout, and wow, I think she got it. It looked like the mat popped up a little it. bit, but she held on to that. Nicely done. And there is that new rule in college that everyone loves to bring up that you must hold the stick and can't do shuffle your feet or salute the judge. You have to hold it for two seconds. Yeah, Annie, what are your thoughts on that new stick rule? Because I know we always used to joke about, you know, it's a college finish. They're kind of sticking, but stepping while they're just saluting the judge at the same time. I've actually liked it. I think it's pretty crystal clear if it's a stick or not most of the time or if it's going to get deducted. So. I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on that. Great, and with the excelling talent that these athletes are coming to college gymnastics with, it is so important to try to really narrow down on the deductions and where you can take tents because a lot of these athletes are achieving perfection more and more. And so knowing where to take the deductions for the judges to help it be less biased as possible, I think is really important. Although it does take some of the fun of way of being able to jump up and down right after you <laughs> stick a landing. <laughs> right, I would agree with you on that. One thing that was consistent when talking to all the coaches this week is where can you find those extra tenths that can be added onto your total score? Because even the smallest step is a whole might be a whole tenth off. And gymnastics, if you know gymnastics and you follow it, you know that every tenth counts, the littlest things add up. And so that now that we're in postseason, a lot of these coaches and athletes are looking for those stuck landings, those one step, whether it's stuck, whether it's a tiny step, whatever it is, that it's minimized. Because at the end of the competition, it could come down to qualifying or not based on a step, essentially. Steely King there just finishing up for Texas Women's on the floor, having scored a 9.875 already this season. And looking at Texas Women's scores, a 9.75 by Emily Six, 9.8 by Maddie Gose, 9.8 by Soph Isbell, 
And she's looking at definitely continuing that momentum with that routine she performed right there. Up now on bars is Morgan Shambo and Gabby Hartley on beam for Air Force. Again, pointing out that balance beam is not an easy event to start on. And so far, this Air Force team is doing a really good job of just staying calm and being able to handle and roll with that extra layer of pressure. To up to date on some of those beam scores, Melanie Stone started off Cornell with a nine, or on balance beam, Clara Wallace started off with a 9.825 for Air Force, followed by Maggie Slife's 9.65 and Kylie Green's 9.85. So definitely comparable scores to Texas women's from the floor exercise. Gabby Hartley up now. A lot of times in these competitions, the first event is kind of where you find your rhythm for the rest of the meet and the rest of the event. So that's why sometimes we may see a couple of mistakes or nerves getting out um, of the athletes on any of the events, but then consistency starts to hit as each rotation goes on. You could see that stuck dismount over on balance beam. Another nice routine done by Air Force. Aaliyah Reed Hammond went up on vault with a 9.75 and Lexi Brecker right there tried to hang on to that stick but took a step forward. Currently of the individuals, Kylie City and Aaliyah Reed Hammond are leading the pack with a 9.75. Now that the individual's rotation is done on vault, we will be focusing in on bars, floor, and beam. Up on floor right now for Texas women's is Daisy Woodring, one of their outstanding performers. She is a WCGA D2 Athlete of the Year as a grad student, and this is her first appearance this year on the floor exercise. What does it mean to be a grad student or in your last few years of gymnastics and still be contributing in new ways and making new lineups Sydney? I think that just goes to show how great of not only an athlete, but of a person that she is. And just being able to grow throughout all of your years and gaining all that experience and knowledge that she's able to share with just her underclassmen and team as a whole is huge. And it gives them as a whole team just so, so much of an advantage. And so I can't imagine that she's not having fun out there doing her thing at this point. Like we mentioned before, it's autopilot. She's done these skills, all of this gymnastics for over 10 years now. So really cool and, and it's been fun to watch her. Josie Moylan up for Cornell on bars, unfortunately just fell. So that does mean that they are going to have to count a fall. Um, and so now it's just as important for her to finish strongly so that that score that they have to count can still be in a good range. Ayla McKean on beam for Air Force. And Sydney, you mentioned how sticks are contagious. Can falls be contagious too in a lineup? Yes and no, I will say. I think a lot of times teams, this is what you practice, you know, during the week, during the fall. This is these lineups, these inner squads that they're doing all to prevent. If someone has a fall, you have to be so mentally strong to brush it off, not pay attention to it. And so I think falls can be contagious, but only if you let them. And I think for a lot of these teams, especially like we mentioned that we're in postseason, the gymnastics is there. They know how to handle that pressure. Had a great execution and difficulty as well in that remainder of that routine, hitting that handstand vertically, just like the judges want to see right on top of that bar. So a great finish from her. Ayla McKean rounding oh out the beam performance by Air Force, following Gabby Hartley's 9.75 and Kimberly Kincaid's 9.8. Sophie Hernandez getting started for Texas Women's on Floor. She is just a freshman and has already scored a season high of a 9.95. She was rewarded gymnast of the meet for her 9.925 floor performance earlier this season. 9.95, what a high score. That's gotta give her so much confidence. 
just with her gymnastics, but also in competition. That's really something to be proud of. It's as close as you can get to a 10, and I have a feeling with three years to follow in her collegiate career, she might just come close, if not obtain that goal. Absolutely. Kirsten Johnson from Talladega, up from a freshman from Baltimore, Maryland. She has scored a 9.825 on this event. all-around competitor Lola Sepulveda on the balance beam. She is from Bridgeport and also a freshman. She has an all-around high of a 39.15. See right there that gainer front tuck with the leg lifted. That's a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> she made that look really easy but Definitely not easy, especially on a four inch balance beam. In case anyone can't tell how thin the beam is, it is very teeny tiny. <laughs> Up on the beam looks difficult. I still have nightmares of not being able to stay on the beam. <laughs> still wow, dream great. about it. Great bail by Kirsten Johnson. And hitting the handstands, winding up for her dismount. Huge double layout. She can see about that routine. Uh -huh, I know. Absolutely. Shout out to all of her teammates that are watching from home. I know a lot of these athletes weren't able to travel since they are traveling here to this meet as individual competitors. So big shout out to all those athletes that are watching at home and supporting their teammates. Lola Sepulveda there finishing up on the beam for Bridgeport with a fabulous routine. And I have a feeling just from these first couple routines. This all-around competition is going to be tight. It definitely is going to be tight. And you saw that dismount she did, which is unique, that one and a half, front one and a half off the end of the beam and stuck it. Very impressive and pretty to watch. You don't see many of those. Oh, difficult. Morgan Price up now from Fisk, the sophomore. And I am to watch her today. She has scored a 39.4 in the all around and she definitely brings the sass. So sit back and enjoy this routine. Wow, nicely done double pike to start out. I don't even know if we need commentary on, on this routine like you said, Annie, because it's so good and so fun to watch. She is her own commentary. <laughs> she has scored a <laughs> 9.875 two times this season. Far, so good on this routine, I'd say. She hits her last pass, or when she hits her last pass, it's gonna be a big score. Great amplitude on those leaps, too. Not a single detail is missed. The performance, the facial expressions, the leaps, not to mention the tumbling as well. Face so loud is shaking the camera. I think that was intentional. Getting ready for this last tumbling pass. Wow. <laughs> Same reaction from both of us. Two and a half. Just the height, the form, the execution on that end of the last tumbling pass was phenomenal. That is going to be a huge score for Morgan Price. I'm hoping she tops her season score of a 9.875 personally, but I'm no judge, so I'd give it to her though. <laughs> <laughs> I'd give it to her too. That was incredible to watch. So to cap off rotation one, we saw some big scores this first event and also not from some teams as well. We can see that 
Air Force leads with a 48.9 from their beam rotation. Texas women's follows with a 48.825. And Cornell had a rough start on their board rotation with 46.85, having to count that fall. However, like I said, it isn't their highest scoring event. So there's so much room for growth as this routine and meet continues. What are your key takeaways, Sydney? I agree with everything you said. Cornell definitely didn't want to start off with a couple of falls on bars, but like we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, anything can happen. So there is so much room for comeback, and especially with these other teams, they're going to want to continue to climb as well and just improve because it is going to be a tight race. I'm going to throw it over to our sponsor, Brandy Wine Valley, as well as Cornell's head coach, Melanie Hall, and hear from her what this championship means to her. We'll be right back. You know that feeling? Carefree excitement? Sun on your skin? Fun on a whim? Getaways fall into place. Cares fall by the wayside. Time slows down in buzzing downtowns. Summer's in the air in Chester County's Brandywine Valley, nestled in the countryside of Philadelphia. Take it in with a getaway and receive untimed tickets to Longwood Gardens with your stay at brandywinevalley.com. This national championship has been incredibly impactful for our team over the years. I think we started back in 2000. Um, and over the years, we've had All-Americans, we've had national champions. Um, we've won it as a team one time. We were the first non-scholarship school to um, win this meet. And I think, you know, every team is always looking for something to end the season on a high note, kind of icy on the cake. And for us, that this is that, that chance. So, um, you know, to make it as a team, to have the opportunity to compete with such, you know, high level uh, teams in this meet, I think really gives that feel of the national championship. And um, and I, I just, I wanna thank USA Gymnastics mostly because they're the ones that kind of got this meet started back in the 80s when the NCAA stopped recognizing division in gymnastics. And so for us, um, this is our national championship. It is very important to our team and to our school and we're really excited about um, what this year might look like. So special to hear from the coaches on what this championship means to them, and they will continue to put up a fight for the rest of this competition just by how meaningful it is just to be here today. Wanted to take a minute to shout out also in Verdius, just a reminder that you are capable of viewing each individual stream. So if there's a team specifically that you want to follow, be sure to click on those sub streams between vault bars, beam, and floor. Otherwise, follow along with us in the quad view and get to watch all of the action and feel all the excitement with us. I know as a broadcaster, Verdius is being a pioneer and being able to broadcast on this platform is just such a great opportunity as it has so many new features and score tracking. I don't know about you, Sydney, but my personal favorite is the green light system. So green light means go, yellow means waiting for a score. Doesn't get much more simpler than that. And so being able to track the scores as a former gymnast who was terrible and couldn't name a single one of the scores I've ever gotten in my career, it really is helpful to be able to track along. Sydney, what yeah. are your favorite aspects? Absolutely. One of my favorite features is the live scoring and how quickly it's up front in front of me. I can see the rest of the lineup because I know not all the time when you're watching on TV or watching um, wherever that you can't see the full lineup or you might forget. And so being able to see that right in front of me live as the scores are coming in, almost like you're getting notified of a personal notification of what the score is, is by far my favorite feature, especially like you mentioned, Andy, as a broadcaster, things can get jumbled really quickly. There's so much going on. So having that as just a base has been amazing. And for when I can't update on all the scores, Verdius is there for <laughs> you. No, it's been a great platform to be able to commentate on. Um, how has this streaming service differed for you, Sydney, not only as a commentator, but as a viewer too? As a viewer, I feel just so much more personally connected to the competition. I feel like I'm there even if I'm just watching. And 
I feel like I can get a better aspect and idea of what's going on, who's on what event, what, like I said, the lineups, if there's any lineup changes, those are happening live as well um, on this platform. And so that's something that just makes it so much easier to follow along with the sport, especially for people that have become new gymnastics fans, which we love. We love getting new fans. So being able to see it on such a simple platform like this, but also for the lifelong gymnastics fans, also being able to see some more in-depth features is really where I think that this platform is different from others. It's cool to see the technology evolve with it, and it's so important to have that opportunity for all schools to get that broadcasting experience. You'll see the lineups here listed. On vault, we will have Texas women's coming off their floor exercise. The individuals will move to the bar rotation after I've just completed vault. Cornell over to the beam and Air Force over to the floor exercise. Your current rotation one leaders. On Cornell's beam, I definitely am, this is their best event all year. So after having a shakier first rotation, I'm excited to see what they put up in this. And out of all the events to come out and nail, this is their event. And they have shown such consistency and have super depth, uh, as the head coach said. And so I'm excited to see how they go out there and show that consistency today. I think it's a great opportunity too for them to get back on track again. They didn't want to have those falls that they did uh, on bars. And so again, beam is a really tough event, but like you said, one of their best. So great opportunity for them to kind of reset in a sense and get back on track for the rest of the competition. And not to mention Air Force is on floor exercise. So they are gonna put up a fight as they've earned a 49 plus three weeks in a row, their first ever streak of a 49, three weeks in a row in Air Force history. So they are also going into an event that is their strong suit. Not to mention Texas women's, they have Caitlin Hoyland, who has scored a 9.875, as well as Daisy Woodring, that graduate student, having scored a 9.95. They definitely have an upperclassman heavy lineup this in this vault lineup. And so they're bringing in experience and confidence into this event. As a reminder, individual competitors will be on the bars. Starting off for those individuals is Gabriella Denoso. On vault, Cami Zarlengo starting off for Texas women's. Regina Walton on the balance beam for Cornell and Clara Wallace on floor for Air Force. And unfortunately on vault, we saw that Yurchenko full from Cami Zarlingo and just, she put her hands down. She just didn't have quite enough rotation or power. So not ideal for how they wanted to start. But if any team can get back on track on vault, it is Texas women's. First person is so important because they set the tone. And then as you mentioned to me, it puts that pressure on all five girls remaining to hit their routines. And so it's definitely not how you want to start the event, but also as the lineup grows, the intention behind it is that the anchor will have the highest scoring. So hopefully that their lineup is built in that way. And so they will have no problem with that. Yeah, and one thing that you and I can both speak on from experience is that you practice these lineups day in and day out. Every single day you're running through this lineup. If somebody falls, if somebody doesn't, you know, whatever it is, you are trained to know and to be ready for whatever is happening. Exactly what the Air Force coach said as well when he had a chance to speak with her. Their goal is to play gymnastics and enjoy it. It's a way to cut loose, especially for those in the academy at Air Force. And so they are really trying to just have fun and not let that crash pressure get to them. You could see there Emma Burklack with a stuck vault after the Texas women's fall. Great way Talk to about come pressure. out after that. <laughs> right. She nailed Talk it. Talk about being able to handle pressure. That is a perfect example. <laughs> You had a beautiful laid out your Chanko Foles following Cam Userlango's 
up on bars, Kylie City, waiting to get the green light from the judges. And I know that we can hear how loud it is. You can hear the screams and the yells and the chants from the computer or from the live stream. So it seems like there's a ton going on in there. And the energy is just great. Kelly Avery bun up for balance beam for Cornell. on vault. Huge amplitude on that Yurchenko full. A little bit really of King steps. there up on vault. Really nicely done though. Texas women's is, is on it right now. Ever since that first unfortunate fall, they have nailed the next two. Bringing the heat. They do not want that fall to disturb the momentum that they had starting off on their best event on floor. Regina Walton starting Cornell off with a big 9.7. Which like we talked about earlier is huge for a team that's coming off a couple of falls that they didn't want in the first rotation, but now going over to their best event, but also I would say a consistent census amongst everybody else is that it's one of the most difficult events. So far, so good though for them. Ayla McKean now on the floor in the bottom right screen for Air Force. She has scored a 9.85 this season, contributing to Air, For Air Force's floor high score of a 49.15. Unfortunately, in the bottom right on floor exercise, we did see a fall on that front full punch layout. What's so tricky about those combination skills is that the timing is just everything. If you punch wrong, if you time it out a little bit off, then it could mess up the entire skill. Saw that, but Sophia Isbell for Texas Women's just stuck another Yurchenko layout full. A huge addition to their lineup to stick two back to back. I can see how sticks are contagious now. Sticks are contagious. And after that 9-1 from Texas Women's from Cami Zerlango, Emma scored 9.75, Dealey King another 9.75. So expecting those scores to grow at the minimum. That just speaks volumes to them as individual athletes, but also the team, the team as a whole. Alexandra Kina. Now, the senior for Cornell on beams has scored a career high of a 9.925. Very capable athlete. She is following teammates Regina Walton's 9.7 and Avery 9.775. Looked like on vault that your Chico full, she was going for the stick and broke out a little too early. Unfortunately, I had to take that slight step forward that will be a deduction, but still made it on her feet, so it will be a good score. And Izzy Woodring, that was up on vault, the grad student. She has scored a 9.95 with a 9.95 start value. Just a reminder, your tank layout fold does not start from a 10 but a 9.95. So she has achieved perfection and is the reigning USAG vault national champion. So I think she just wanted it so badly to get that third stick in a row that she unfortunately tried too hard to get her feet planted in the ground. And something to point out, like you said, you, they just these athletes work so hard and they do want it so badly. And so I think a big mindset that they have is being able to trust their training and trust the process because they perfect these routines for so long, so many years, but so many hours in the gym leading up to each competition season. So again, like Annie said, they want it so bad. Sometimes you have to be able to separate I want it so bad, but also I need to trust my training. I know how to do this. The bar specialist, 
has scored a 9.825, and she did a fabulous job at hitting those handstands and that death drop there at the end in celebration of her routine. Celebrations are always a lot of fun to watch. I love when there's a huge routine, a huge stuck dismount, everyone's just going crazy. Being Speaking individual of competitions on bars, yeah, that vault, <laughs> take it away, Sydney. <laughs> Absolutely, I was gonna say, speaking of huge, a really big Yurchenko full, which that is a vault that we'll see a lot in both sessions today and the one tonight, um, but that was really well executed. That was senior Caitlin Hoyland that has not a high, but an average of a 9.819. So not shocked by that performance in the slightest. She is following Sophia Isbell's 9.825 and Daisy Woodward's 9.65. This lineup did a fabulous job at not letting that first fall shake them and get right back up on their feet and keep that momentum going that they started on floor. Sarah Willis for Air Force on the floor exercise. saw earlier Air Force did have a fall on floor so the rest of the lineup oh and I think I just jinxed her they just it looked like she put her hands down on her last tumbling pass that double pike which is a really Cow. difficult last tumbling pass it is and the stamina and cardio endurance is sometimes hard to get all that double pike all the way around but if Morgan Price there on the vault, the all-around competitor, just had a huge Yurchenko layout full. She has a season high of a 9.9 .9 that she has achieved twice already this season. Do you think it'll be another one? <laughs> I think she's quite capable of getting another one. That one looks pretty close to it, in my opinion. Just the power that she has, we saw on floor and then again here on vault. We're going to see some big scores from her. Sophia Ruppler up now for the individuals on bar from Southern Connecticut. She's competing in vault bars and floor, all having achieved a 9.775 season high. You'll see the judges meeting there on balance beam. Sometimes if there might be a score discrepancy if there's a significant gap in the four judges' scores. As a reminder, four judges, top and bottom ones drop and then average the two middles in these championship settings. How difficult is that to be a competitor waiting? It already is a lot of pressure and letting your nerves and butterflies build, but when the judges have to take an extra sweet time, how does that feel yeah. being an athlete? I love that you asked that because it was something I was thinking of earlier in this broadcast. It is a mental game, I would say, standing to wait. And it seems like something, from the viewer standpoint, it seems like something so small and tiny, just to wait a couple more seconds or 30 more seconds. But it really can play tricks uh, on your mind. It's like a mind game, having to wait a little bit longer when you're ready and focused to do a routine. So again, all these athletes are used to it and know how to handle it. This is what you train for every single day. But do not let it fool you. It, it is tough when you have to wait longer, for sure. For these competitions, the athletes get there to go through all the events, and then they simply get a 30-second touch to train all their skills quickly before they go up and compete. So keeping the body warm is sometimes the biggest challenge. You can see JC Jordan getting ready for her bar routine. Natalia Terrani with a great, beautiful series on beam on your top right score, and Gianna Martina for Air Force on floor, nailing her first pass. Gianna, or Gigi, is a floor specialist. She has a season high of a 9.85, as well as a season average of a 9.85, so consistency is the game for Gigi. You can see on this bar routine, 
in the upper left box has been absolutely phenomenal. Beautiful double layout, slight deduction. Almost, she almost had that stick, but a slight deduction on that landing. Wow, what a great routine. Press All the way how through. she kept her legs together on such a huge double layout. JC Jordan, the bar season hive of 9.85, the Southern Connecticut senior, hoping to get another chance to get out on the competition floor on Sunday with that routine. It's gonna be pretty close because that was a really nicely done bar routine from her. Over on the floor exercise, Air Force started the routines with Clara Wallace, a 9.725, with that fall, Ayla McKean, a 9.0, Sarah Willis with a 9.05, waiting on Gianna Martinez's score. I always say in these quad meets, there's usually time periods where nobody is going on an event. It's rare and it seems really weird that you have four events, but yet <laughs> nobody's on one right now. So that's what we're seeing right now. A little bit of a waiting game. Take a breath, especially with this stellar performance that we have coming up on the bars. Gigi Maslone from Southern Connecticut, just a freshman, having already scored a 10.0. And get this, the first 10.0 in school history. How exciting and honored is it, are we to be able to watch this in person? Absolutely, what an incredible accolade to have, especially being the first one. And we can see why so far, huge. She had a huge Takacha down to that pack, to the low bar, and now back up to the high bar, hoping for a stuck dismount right here. Wow, and she got it. <laughs> That's going to be, she might, she might have one of the top, I don't want to call it too early yet, but she might have one of the top bar scores in this session. Way too many top scores. <laughs> there would be 10 way ties with all the, with all the talent that we're seeing here. Up on floor for Air Force, Gabriella Metcha and Sydney Beers uh, for Cornell on the balance beam. Sydney Beers starting off with that back handspring, back layout, acro series. We had a chance to talk with Cornell's head coach. She mentioned how Sydney is a leader in and out of the gym. She is one of the most passionate athletes that they've had to learn new skills. And a lot of times at the collegiate level, it's easy to coast and be comfortable and strive for perfection with the skills that you already know. But Sydney constantly is striving for more and perfection at the same time, as you can see with that stuck landing. That was a really pretty beam routine to watch. And like you mentioned, Annie, not too often you're learning new skills in college. So really impressive that she enjoys it and still does because that is not something that's quite common, I would say. Gigi Massalone with a 9.85, I believe is the highest bar score that we have seen yet today. So she is in that top spot. Unfortunately, I wish that it was would have been a little bit higher, but the judges clearly are there in person. So uh, may not have been able to see some of the deductions that they took there. Sydney Beers wrapped up on beam and Gabby Mecha on floor. Gearing up for their anchor spot, Maggie Slife for Air Force. I'm excited to watch Maggie's routine. She's just been such a huge force for them this entire year. And only a freshman too, which speaks volumes. She is going to make such an impact in this program for her years to come. She is such a dynamic athlete that not only has the powerful tumbling, but just the grace and control that you need for the dance aspects of the floor exercise as well as those landings. And speaking from, you know, gymnastics backgrounds here, that's really hard to have both. 
that artistic side, the artistry side, to the power side as well. There are not many gymnasts, I would say, that have both of those qualities. It's usually one or the other. Michaela Burton on beam. The sophomore scored a 9.9 .9 this season already. She started with a front aerial straight into a side aerial. A really difficult combination right there and unique as well. Do not see her, that too often. Her confidence gives me confidence in her. I don't have any nerves when she's up there and her, she's just so solid and calming to watch, which is so rare, especially on the beam, especially with it being four inches, as you mentioned. Yeah, confidence on beam is huge. She's had it's a couple really of combinations. Athletes. Yeah, and she's had a couple of combinations here throughout this routine that she's been slightly off on, but she would never even know because of how well she's able to cover it up. Ending with that round off at one and a half, a little bit under rotated, so had to take a step back, which will be a deduction. But overall, really nicely done. What a way to come out for Cornell after a shaky bar rotation to go out there and crush it with those scores that you're seeing. They will drop one of their 9.525s. I know Michaela Burton score isn't in, but I can predict that it'll be a little bit higher than that. So what a way to come back from all those falls. As we mentioned, Maggie Slife wrapping out the floor competition for Air Force following Gabby Mecha's 9.6 and Gigi Martinez 9.8, the high score for Air Force so far. Kirsten Johnson back again from Talladega, a beam season high of a 9.725. Kirsten is such a cool athlete in and out of the gym. She is an ambassador actually for Brown Girls Do Gymnastics and Talladega's slogan this year is actually BTU, meaning bigger than us. That's their team motto and that is what they have led, led with. They're not only representing themselves, or their school, but they're representing a whole minority group. And it's just so neat to be able to compete in the thing that you love the most for something that's bigger than yourself. And Kirsten Johnson, she is the spokeswoman without even saying a word through her gymnastics. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. And also she has such a great platform to be able to share that on as well. She also is one that just portrays confidence throughout this beam routine. She is moving through it, and her rhythm and flow is just spot on. Really gifted athlete. You can see Lola Sepulveda there for Bridgeport, getting a few words of encouragement from the head coach on the floor exercise before she goes out there to compete. Wow, finishing that B routine with a stuck dismount <laughs> in the cheering after. I would say she's happy with that routine. And those are cheers, not from her teammates. Reminder that she is an individual. There are other Talladega gymnasts that you'll see in session two, but those are the Cornell teammates that are cheering on and taking her in as one, which is so cool to see. And we talked about how it's more than just gymnastics or more than just yourself. And that right there, embodies that aspect of what our sport means. Yeah, I absolutely love that too, that they're able to cheer for one another, really just get to know the other athletes too, because a lot of times you're not able to talk with other teams or other athletes competing. You're just kind of staying in your bubble and your team. So having the individuals there or the all-rounders added on with you is a really cool experience that not enough other athletes, I would say, get to do. Are you Lola Sepulveda? First team GEC on this event and in all around, an all American, and second team all American on the vault, which we will see in the next rotation. She has scored a 9.875 on this event. And that was a lot to unpack in that tumbling pass. She did a front tuck through to that two and a half 
front tuck. Very difficult tumbling pass. Kirsten Johnson's score is in for Talladega from her beam routine with a 9.825. As well as maybe slice for Air Force, a 9.875, taking away the high score for Air Force. Her team is really fun to watch, and just the form that she had is what really sets her apart. A huge Rudy to a back layout step out, and when you do those combination passes, the judges are really looking at that second pass or combination to just rise, the second skill to rise in the air, and she did a great job with that. Paula, Virginia native, goes out there and crushes her second event. I'm looking forward to see what's to come on the following events for her. Take a look here at rotation number two, event summaries. You can see on vault, <clears throat> Texas woman had a 48.825 but it didn't come close to Cornell's 48.65 that they came out and hit on the theme. Air Force rounding out the competition with a 48.05. Pretty comparable scores so far. We're halfway through the competition. The energy and the confidence, everyone has their momentum. How can we approach the next half or how do teams approach the next half of the competition, Sydney? Well, I think now, the teams are comfortable and they're getting more into their rhythm. We're seeing better scores, more consistency. Cornell is a great example of that. A couple mistakes on bars, completely bounced back with that 48.65. Then you take a look at Texas women's who started with the fall on vault, but then the rest of those scores are lights out with the 48.8. So they're really starting to push more and more here and really wanting to hit those peak scores at the right time. And I think all of these teams are on track to do that. Is no one is perfect today, but they are coming out with a vengeance and attacking their routines and going all out with nothing to lose. They know that there's nothing to lose and they're all vying for that spot tomorrow night in the final championships round. We will be right back after a word from one of our sponsors, Synergy, as well as the Air Force head coach on what this championship means to her coaching staff as well as her team. Gymnastics, established in 2020, located in Malvern, PA, offers recreational classes, USAG competitive levels 2 through 10, and Excel. We strive to instill strong foundational skills to help our gymnasts grow and progress in their gymnastics, as well as build lifelong skills. Synergy is proud to be sponsoring the 2024 Collegiate National Championships hosted by Westchester University. From our team to yours, we wish the gymnasts and their teams the best of luck this weekend. Have fun, ladies. This championship is um, another opportunity for our athletes to experience what it's like to qualify into postseason. Anytime you can feel and experience what a championship feels like, um, the more you kind of have the will to get back here and do it again. It showcases some incredible talent that we have all over the country. And probably the best part is that we get to know, hear other people's stories, learn what their struggles are, and can have a mutual respect and appreciation for each other and what everybody's journey looks like and how different it can be. These are some amazingly brilliant young women who are going to lead our country um, in the next years to come. So it's neat to see the, the quality of athletics and obviously the brilliant minds they have. So I think our future is bright. Bright, bright indeed. I have loved watching these athletes not only grow in the sport, but as individuals as well. Um, so another, just another reminder that if you want to follow along with your teams, feel free to select the individual apparatus streams going through vault bars, beam, and floor. But I know Sydney and I are enjoying the quad view, so come along with us as well in that journey if you desire. Another feature that is so great about Verdius is their YouTube channel. If 
Feel free to su subscribe to Verdius's YouTube channel where they have plenty of streams, over 100 streams from this season, and they have both women's and male gymnastics events with their live streaming apparatuses. There is no paywall within the YouTube because of the local sponsors that are so generous in order to make this happen and stay out of that paywall. Feel free to go to YouTube and you can see not only the production streams, but as well as the live scoring streams associated with those events. Live scoring is definitely changed through Verdius, and I'm excited to see how it continues to change the sport of gymnastics as it is growing so rapidly across the country. Innovated with live scoring via video, you can follow a third of the NCAA this way through Verdius YouTube channel. look at rotation three's vault rotation three is lineup for all of the teams moving to vault is air force texas women's will be on the bars and floor exercise will be cornell with those individuals now on the coveted beam everyone's favorite competing on beam is always tricky but as an individual how can the individuals make sure that they go out there and do what they are capable of well, just like we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, they were able to start on vault, which is what they're used to starting on for home meets. It's the official Olympic order. So I think having vault and bars under their belt and now being able to head to beam, they've got to be feeling really confident. And so far they've all done a great job of just continuing to get better throughout each event. So I think that all the nerves are going to be calmed at this point and it's a great time for them to just be able to attack it. Some people to look out for in rotation three, Maggie Slice, she does a Yerchenko one and a half, the first 10-0 start value that we are going to be seeing on vault today. She has scored a 9.9 .9 this season and is a conference champion on this event. So be sure to keep an eye out for Maggie Slice on the vault. Texas women's bars as well, Caitlin Hoyland. She has a season high of a 9.95. And as a senior, I know she's looking to cap that here and get her team that high score. Also on the floor exercise, Cornell does not fall short of any of those accolades as Alexandra Quinoa has a season high of a 9.9. .9. And Caitlin Walsh is also a senior that you wanna keep your eye out for on this floor exercise. Halfway mark, a lot of gymnastics ahead, a lot of gymnastics behind us. Is this almost like a refresh restart button for these teams? In a way, yes, because it's the halfway mark, but all these teams have faced adversity already through the competition. So I feel like they've had to already have a reset and kind of bounce back already. So now I think they're in their own bubbles. And like we've said a couple times here, they're right in their smooth rhythm. They know what to do. Again, the gymnastics is there. So just staying on that autopilot. Slice forming up her Yurchenko one and a half there in the top left screen on vault. She will be at the end of Air Force's vault lineup. So we will be sure to mention when she is up. They a have a start value too. Brings so it, it has such an impact on a lineup, on a team, and ultimately just that end score because we don't see too many athletes starting from that 10-0. So you think about it, if you're doing your Yurchenko full, that's a 9.95, that's half a tenth of a difference right there, which if you multiply that throughout the whole lineup, that can add up to be a lot for the end score. So And huge. I'm not about to do that math on that, but definitely can <laughs> add up with those scores. And we always talk about it as we near the postseason that every tenth matters, every quarter of a tenth matters. And so to have that high start value is what every gymnast is ultimately achieving. And vault just happens to be the event where it is rare for gymnasts to have that 10-0 start value. Starting off on vault for Air Force, Ayla McKean on bars for Texas women's Laney Hunt. Floor exercise for Cornell, Addie Rothstein, and our individual competitor from Southern Connecticut State, Gabriela Deniso on balance beam.
Gabby has scored 9.825 on beam, and she is a freshman out of Connecticut. And she actually was a pole vaulting all state <laughs> champion. So wow. not just great on beam, but apparently is a multifaceted athlete. Very cool fun fact there. Also to point out a freshman leading off your lineup is impressive in itself. That's extremely hard to do. You can see a couple of wobbles that she's had throughout the routine. Again, maybe a little bit of nerves, but First athlete up on any event, whether it's as a team or individuals, is always going to be tough. Being a freshman starting off the competition on Cornell's floor, they had a lineup change, so never mind Lainey Hunt is up for Cornell on the floor. Bar is just Lainey Hunt on Texas Women's just finished. Uh, but yes, on floor, Addie Rostein, the freshman, having scored a season high of a 9.8. Very tough position to be in as a freshman, lots of pressure. Um, but a lot of these freshmen carry such confidence coming in. And what is that transition to college gymnastics like? The transition is, it's really hard. You know, it's a lot different than club gymnastics and you're going from competing in JOs to now competing as a team and making lineups. And I feel like there's a lot, a lot more requirements on a daily basis in collegiate gymnastics. And again, just on top of that, as a sport, you're on a college campus, you have classes, you have all these other things that you're trying to balance. And so I think a lot of things play a role and a factor into that transition. But again, these athletes have done a great job so far being able to handle it because being a collegiate athlete also comes with that pressure that we've talked about this entire broadcast. And they have to be very disciplined athletes. Sarah Willis there for vault on Air Force, following Ayla McKean's 9.575. Angelina Stanfa now on the beam, a freshman from Southern Connecticut State University, majoring in nursing. Back handspring, back handspring layout was that acro series. The bottom left of the screen was just, she was slightly off, her hips looked like they were turned, so unfortunately had that fall. A triple series is very difficult to do on balance beam. Cami Zarlango waiting for the green light from the judges on bars for Texas women's, following Lainey Hunt's 9.675 to kick things off for Texas women's. Up next on the floor, Cami Whit Whitaker, following Addie Rothstein. Just looking at the events on bars, the judges are really looking for those handstands on top of the bar. A really tight form throughout the routine and then those stuck landings. On beam, speaking of stuck landing, she was a little bit short on that blind landing, which is very difficult, but a little bit of an under rotation there, so that's gonna be a bigger deduction. Huge stuck landing there on the bars by Cami for Texas women's. They are on fire. They are bringing that momentum from vault straight over to the bars with those stuck landings. They have sticky feet, that's for sure. Absolutely sticky feet. And just something to appreciate is they did have a fall. The first athlete up fell on vault and it did not even phase them. It hasn't phased them. It didn't phase them. They're continuing to push. And so that was a huge opportunity that they had to bounce back. And they have really taken control of it. Cami Whitaker now for Cornell. They have no choreographer on the team. So it is a whole team effort. They have very unique dance and choreography and a lot of personality as the whole team kind of contributes to constructing these team, these routines together, which if you could see the team, you would be able to see them dancing along <laughs> with the girl performing. I know we always used to joke that we knew six, seven, eight floor routines, depending, uh, not even just ours. We knew the choreography for all of them. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it fun though. And those girls that aren't competing then, it's like they're competing 24 routines. <laughs>
getting a Emily. good workout in, right? Watching <laughs> and doing it on the side, absolutely. So, sometimes the meets that I didn't compete in were more exhausting from all the cheering. <laughs> if you didn't walk away with your voice lost, I don't know if yeah. you definitely lost something there. <laughs> <laughs> Emily Call up on theme, Southern Connecticut State. She is a senior. She was a Bridgeport transfer, actually, and a GEC scholar athlete for three years. And on bars, Carolyn Bounds for Texas Women's. And Carolyn Bounds, we actually saw a fall from her, which it looked like she fell on her first handstand up. And so when that happened, she literally had to repeat the entire routine over again. And that's really difficult to do. So. She did a great job being able to do that entire routine, minus obviously having that fall in the first handstand, but just mentally being in that position of knowing that you just fell and on the first scale and now you have to get up and redo it can be very tough and she handled that really well. Especially on the bars, it's such a rhythmic event. On the other events, you get to kind of reset through dance or you get 30 seconds on beam and bars to kind of reset. but on bars, all of your skills connect to one another. So to fall on a skill really takes you out of that mindset of that rhythmic routine that you're so used to. And having to do just one extra kip cast handstand is adds a lot actually, shockingly, um, to, to the cardio aspect of the routine as well. It does, and I think something people might not realize or understand is that you do have that flow and that rhythm, like you mentioned, Annie, on beam and floor, but you also, you do have it on bars. You don't want to go too fast for the routine. You don't want to go too slow. You have that timing that's just, just your timing, but what you get used to and kind of how you have those cues. Air Force, the freshman on vault, following Gabby Hartley's 9.625. Claire Wallace scored a 9.75, and excuse me, that was Gabby Mecha. On Texas Women's, Lainey Hunt started with a 9.675. Camille Zerlango came out and dominated with a 9.8 on the bars, and Carolyn Bounds with a 9.2. Up now, Alaya Gilmore. Great handstand, perfectly vertical on top of that bar. Wow, had so much power on that double act dismount. She almost bounced backward. Too much power is a really good problem to have, I always say. Juice, it's probably all that excitement and cheering that we're hearing. Josie Moylan up for Cornell on floor, following Addie Rothstein's 9.6 and Cami Whitaker's 9.8. Looks like the judges are talking about Emily Cole's beam routine from Southern Connecticut. Liberty Mora is on deck for the balance beam. She has scored a 9.825 and in her club career prior to college was the 2021 Beam JO National Champion. She's a very elegant competitor. And there's that huge one and a half that we saw Mag Maggie Slife on vault for Air Force. She looks like she went for that stick a little bit too much. What do you think happened there, Sydney? I think it's hard with the one and a half because it's a blind landing. And so it takes a lot of practice to be able to know where you are in the air. You really have to have a good air sense. And so a lot of times when we see these athletes trying to stick a blind landing, it's very difficult. So sometimes either you have too much power and you're flying forwards or going for that stick, you may break out early, which it doesn't mean you don't have enough power. She, it wasn't a power issue, it's just, breaking out of the timing of it and so that's where that under rotation comes in and sticking the hot topic in college gymnastics how do teams focus on this and make sure that sticks are contagious well that's a great question because it may seem silly but we used to dumb it down to the most basic stick drills it's going back to those basic drills those you know maybe level five six seven drills that you're doing to get that stick sense and that timing in your head. And so then that kind of translates and relays into those bigger skills that you're doing. And a lot of times, I know a lot of athletes have 
they might spot something ahead of them. So they're looking at something, whether it's something on the wall or a picture, whatever it may be, they may spot it uh, throughout their routines. Everyone kind of has it a little bit different, but I do think it starts from going back to the basics. From Sydney Seed, All-American, all you have to do, <laughs> get out of your chairs right now and do a few straight <laughs> jumps and there you go. You're on your way to becoming a D1 athlete. <laughs> Uh, yeah, exactly. We can all have a stick contest right now. <laughs> Everybody viewing from at home. Exactly. We just stick 101. Show us your great salute. Submit pictures of your prettiest salute. <laughs> yeah, tag, yeah, tag Verdius. Submit tag Verdius on Instagram, on Twitter, and we'll, we'll rank or pick out who we think is best. We're going to be the judges. <laughs> Lola yeah, there Sickle. we go. Shifting yep. roles. Yeah. Yep. Lola Sepulveda there for vault um, for Bridgeport, the all-around competitor. She has scored a 9.825 on this event. On beam right now is Liberty Mora. After a long wait from the judges debacle. And up next on bars is Caitlin Hoyland. The one that I mentioned having a season high of a 9.95 and she's going to do entrance an entrance onto the bars from the other side, which is unique and always fun to watch. Over on beam, that gainer full stuck dismount. One thing to point out was how beautiful her leaps were. The judges are really looking for that 180 degree split on all of the jumps and leaps on floor and on beam. So she did a great job with that. Sandra Kina down on the floor exercise just wrapped up her routine for Canal and she's super pumped about a well-deserved routine. Notice on bars too in the upper left screen, the handstands have been on top of the bar. The form is just incredible. And then she could have landed, taken a lot bigger of a step forward. She really saved that and covered it up well. So well done. That's gonna be a really big score on uneven bars. And following those scores on bars, Aaliyah Gilmore 9.575 and Brooke Ferrari in 9.8. So setting up that great score for Caitlin Hoyland. Maggie Slife with that Yurchenko 1.5 and, and 9.6. You unfortunately do get a significant deduction for squatting that low down. So not exactly what she was hoping for. Still competing a 10-0 start value is something to be proud of. Yeah, Ainge. one thing to point out is getting a 10-0 or you don't just automatically start at a 10.0. You have to have enough bonus through the difficulty of the skills that these athletes are doing or combination skills or passes, whatever it may be. They do not automatically just start from a 10. They have to build that up through the difficulty of their routine. So something to be mindful of when looking at the different skill sets that each of the routines have. Difficulty levels of a skill A through G, I believe, and typically the highest score or highest difficulty we'll see is an E pass, similar to like on floor that two and a half twists. Up on beam now, Angel Lee. She is a junior and has scored a 9.85 two times and is a beam specialist. Uh, first GEC champion for Southern Connecticut State on beam. So you can see why this is her specialist event. On floor, Sydney here's the common name that you'll see in this Cornell lineup. A really unique combination we just saw on balance beam. One thing to point out is that you saw that front aerial back handspring. She was a little bit off. She was able to cover the slight wobble that she could have had. But on top of that, on balance beam, if you miss a connection, these athletes are, they're just so smart and they've done it so many times. They know if they miss a connection where they can add in a new one just on the fly in the routines. And so again, we would never know where it's supposed to be or if they're doing something out of the ordinary, but they know. And so that's a really cool thing and difficult thing to do. Huge smile on bars for the all-around competitor Morgan Price. Being so excited about that. 
And you talked about making it on Beam, having to make up for some lost connections. And Libby Allen, the next competitor up on the balance beam, actually had switched her routine last minute at earlier this season and ended up splitting the beam. But then following, she had broke a program record on the floor exercise. And we'll be lucky enough to see her floor routine in the next rotation. But we talk about coming back and bouncing back from adversity. And this athlete, the junior, one of the mini captains at Southern Connecticut, she is exemplifies how to overcome adversity through that performance. Yeah, wow, that's a great example of overcoming adversity because I think no gymnastics meet is going to be perfect and no gymnastics meet is going to go exactly how you want it to. So almost knowing and preparing for adversity to happen, whether it be the slightest thing as to a big wobble or a misconnection or something on the opposite end of having to count a fall or having multiple falls, anywhere on the spectrum, you're gonna face it. And so, again, that's why these athletes are training all fall, um, all throughout the season to get to the point where they're not phased by that, they're able to bounce back or reset, if you will, from any of these things that could happen. And we've seen that here today, a couple examples of that that we've pointed out. Cornell on the floor exercise, rounding out their lineup. And as I mentioned, Libby Allen on beam as an individual competitor. Caitlin Walsh following Sydney Beer score of a 9.9. .9. And if you look at the Cornell lineup, their skills built 9.6, 9.8, 9.85, 9.85, and 9.9. .9. So Caitlin Walsh is set up for success right now. She just has to take advantage of this opportunity that's given to her. She scored a 9.875 this season. So we'll see what she can do. Nothing like some ACDC to try to get your beat that 9.9 .9 and continue that upward momentum. Absolutely. Floor is such a cardio based event as well. That That's something that you have to train your body to do, right? And build up that cardio to be strong enough to do these two, three tumbling pass floor routines. Libby Allen on the beam finished her routine. You could tell a lot of these athletes are trying so hard to get that stuck landing and they want it so bad that they're just giving away little tents by trying just a little too hard. Just gotta let the gymnastics flow a little bit more. And that was Caitlin Walsh on the floor. Cornell already at a 49.0 on the floor exercise with potential to only increase with Caitlin Walsh's score. Seventh competitor for the balance beam for the individuals, Alexa Melanson from Southern Connecticut State University. A junior that scored a 9.8 on this event from New Brunswick, actually a sociology major. She was her high school senior female athlete of the year. Very cool distinction to have. The final competitor on the floor exercise will be all around all-star Kirsten Johnson. She has scored a 9.85 already this season. And score is in for Angel Lee a 9.75 on beam and Libby Allen a 9.7 on beam. And Morgan Price on the uneven bars, all around competitor with a 9.85.
it looks like Alexa put her hand down on the beam, which is a deduction, and broke the connection. So she would most likely not be starting from a 10.0 start value unless she repeats that skill. And that's exactly what Sydney and I were talking about, how important it is to make those connections and get those high start values so that your scoring potential is just as high. And Kirsten Johnson bringing in the base here on her floor exercise, opening with a huge first pass. And unfortunately, just under rotated on that one and a half dismount on balance beam. Again, those blind landings can be really tough. sound will carry over the broadcast. She makes me want to get up and dance. <laughs> That's the fun part about it, getting to be creative with all the floor routines and the dance that goes along with it. I don't know if my dancing would be picked up by the mic, but my heavy breathing might be. <laughs> what a great performance by Kirsten Johnson on the floor exercise. She and all of the all-around competitors are having a stellar competition. It is going to be a close one when it comes down to the all-around competition. Take a look here at the event summary. We can see that on vault, Air Force got a 48.25 and Cornell really pulled ahead with their 49.225, almost a full point difference from the reigning leaders, Air Force on vault. Texas women's coming out on board bars with a 48.625, which is just around their average. So pretty much around expecting what they were hoping for, as well as the individual competitors there. You could see the scores with Libby Allen's 9.7, Angel Lee is 9.75, but Liberty Mora takes the cake with a 9.8 for those individual competitors. Great thing to point out how we mentioned is Cornell's floor exercise. I mean, wow, 49.225 is something to be proud of. And you could see why just watching all their huge tumbling and great execution throughout that rotation. They matched their season high of a 49.225 that they actually achieved at their conference championship. And so they peaked at the right time, something that all of these teams are striving for. We'll toss it to a quick break to hear from Texas women's head coach about this championship and how her team is coming with their mindset to this event. Yeah, so this championship is so very special um, to our program. Um, We've obviously been competing in this championship for many, many years and having won 10 championships, um, you know, it just, it means everything. Giving these athletes the opportunity to compete for a national championship, uh, to compete with some of the best gymnasts in the nation uh, is just something we look forward to every single year. Uh, we're so grateful for the group of coaches and athletes um, who work so hard uh, to just make this championship top notch, to make sure it's competitive every year. And um, yeah, it's something that, you know, so many of our athletes have just the absolute best memories um, and experiences from college and getting to compete in this championship. So we're grateful and we are excited to be back for another year. What a special competition it is for all of these teams and what a way to hear from all of the head coaches on how they are wrapping out their season. Just a reminder, if you want to see your team competing in the large screen, feel free to click on the individual event streams rather than seeing it in the quad view.
You can see here the next event lineups. Cornell will be on Bolt, Air Force on the bars, Texas women on the beam, and four. The individuals will be wrapping out their competition on one of the arguably most fun events to compete on. on. I think being able to end on floor is one of the most fun parts about a competition. That's when you have the most energy, the last event, you get an extra burst of adrenaline that I feel like you don't get as much of on any other event. Competitors that have been sitting through the whole competition, waiting for their individual event being floor to compete. How, as you and an athlete, how do you mentally approach that? I would say that it's just a fun event, right? It's a fun, the competition's been fun so far. The energy's been great. It's again, a championship weekend. So there's so much going on in your head and so much that you're proud of, but also like I mentioned before, that energy is just different heading into postseason. So I think all of these athletes have just done a great job so far. And then again, just ending with an exclamation point is what I like to think of on that last event, those last routines, and especially getting to share it with all these other incredible athletes around them. You can see Texas women's leading the team's competition with a 46.275, and they were the number seed coming into this competition. And they are in the on the path to definitely accomplish their goal of making it to finals tomorrow night. Following them is Air Force with a 145.225, and closer behind is Cornell with a 144.75. A little bit of a gap between Cornell and Air Force, but anything can happen in gymnastics. We never know what to expect, especially in a championship. Like we've mentioned, every 10th counts. Absolutely, and you will see these athletes fighting till the very end and of course having fun because it is their final competition of the season and this is what all of preseason was gearing up for. I think too, we've talked about the physical aspects and the mental aspects of not only just gymnastics as a whole, but this competition. And another thing to point out is just the emotional aspect of it too, right? And that's such a cool experience, but also can be very emotional for a lot of these athletes or these seniors. And so that's just one thing that I always notice. And I know Andy and I, before the broadcast, were saying how sometimes gymnastics meets are physically exhausting, but mentally and emotionally as well, because you pour so much into the competitions and preseason and just gymnastics as a whole that it can be very emotional, especially if it's, you know, your last competition. Started gymnastics when they were months old or years old. And so they've had gymnastics a part of their identity for as long as they can remember. So to have been doing this sport for years and years and have this potentially be their final competition that they get to go out there and perform is very emotional, not only for them, but for the team and those coaches and parents that have poured so much into the athletes. I mean, the parents and coaches sacrifice so much for these athletes to get them to where they are at today. So it's just as much for them and emotional for them as it is for the athlete themselves. Yeah, that's a great point to bring up too. It's not, gymnastics isn't a sport you can do alone, whether that's with your family, with your coaches, teammates, friends, all of the above, you're doing it for, majority of your life and if you know gymnastics you know it's not a sport you can just say hey i'm gonna take a year off and pick it back up a little bit later it's something that you have to consistently work at and do to be at this level that we're seeing so a lot of like respect throwing for a football in the backyard <laughs> right you're just throwing a couple of backflips through the backyard right <laughs> Speaking of which, the Texas women's beam lineup in the middle, you'll see Daisy Woodring there. She actually is a grad student and is at the peak of her career. Um, as her coaches said, she is doing the strongest, most 
beautiful gymnastics that she has, but more importantly, the most confident. And we spoke about the gaps in gymnastics, how it's hard to take a year off. She actually went on a summer mission trip this summer and was concerned about getting into gymnastics shape. She took a full three weeks off to go on this trip. And it's so cool that her coaches allowed her to do so, to explore other interests. And she came back and is stronger than ever, which is so hard to do. I would equate it to imagine getting on elliptical for a few hours and then trying to walk afterwards. And she did that. That would be the equivalent to like go taking a week off of gymnastics, but she did it three times that amount. So it would be very hard to get back in to where you even left off, let alone to continue to excel in the sport. Yeah, that's an incredible story and also speaks a lot of her coaches for allowing her to do that and have that experience as well. Emily Six there for Texas women's on the beam starting them off. We saw Josie Boylan's Yurchenko layout for Cornell to start them off. And on bars, Air Force, Chelsea Boyer. For the individuals, Sophia Rucker is starting off on floor exercise for Southern Connecticut. So far, it's been a solid beam routine down in the bottom left box. Texas women's did score their season high of a 49.1, their last competition at conference championship. So they have that upward trajectory to keep this lead and front runner spot. But again, it is beam and ending on beam can be a stressful event for a lot of athletes and teams. Yeah, we've said it a couple no times there. <laughs> yeah, and we've mentioned a couple times beam is the make or break event. It's tough to start on. It's tough to end on. <laughs> You, you've got to do it though, right? Every team's got to go to beam, so you just have to get good at it, pretty much, is the, the simplest way to put it. <laughs> First, third, fourth, I'd be nervous, that's for sure. On bars, Chelsea Boyer wrapped up for Air Force to kick things off. And on vault, Avery Vaughn with a front entry vault, a little bit more unique vault than we've been seeing here today. And more impressively than anything on being the, it amazes me how the coaches are able to walk in stiletto heels on those mats. So shout out to Lisa Bowerman for being able to <laughs> walk across those mats. Yeah, you'd be surprised how many coaches do wear those high heels and make it look easy to walk around. I can't even walk on mats without falling on my face barefoot. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm just impressed all around by everyone on the competition floor today. <laughs> Addie Rothstein, the next up for Cornell on vault. And Clara Wallace, next up for Air Force on the bars. Sophie Hernandez for Texas Women, starting her routine on the game here. Sophie Hernandez actually went to the same club gym as me for a little bit. So I remember her when she was really, really, really young. Oh, so it's really oh. cool, full circle moment to watch her now compete. For and that's a the beautiful the thing about gymnastics, how small world it is. We grow up with each other together without even knowing it or recognizing it. And eventually decades down the road, you get to see this little spud running around with their diaper hanging out of their Leo <laughs> now competing in college gymnastics. It's pretty cool full circle moment. It is so cool. And she's been so much fun to watch today. Great giant full over on the bars for Air Force and a great stuck dismount by Clara Wallace following Chelsea Boyer's 9.625. And then again, another back handspring to one and a half stick over on balance beam. That was an exclamation point to that routine. Nicely done. Definitely just a freshman. She has scored a 9.825. Cornell's vault lineup, Josie Moylan a 9.425 and Avery Vion for 9.6. 
they have had their lineup shift a little bit throughout this season due to some injuries and they don't have as much depth on this event but they have very consistent and reliable routines as you're seeing in the scores continue to climb with Addie Rothstein's 9.675. And that's something to make a note of that you have depth. A lot of lineups have depth in them, but at postseason, you really have your lineup finalized, I would say, for most teams. So there's not a lot of changing in and out, but again, we do see injuries because of postseason and season is long and it's hard on your body. So there are lineup changes here and there, but in a perfect world, you would want to keep your lineup as consistent as possible gearing up for competitions like this. Pushes your lineup to be better. It's a competition inside of the gym each day at practice to try to get one of those six spots within the lineup. And so it's almost important to have that much depth and just for the longevity of the season as well. Cammie Whitaker on vault. Duck for your Tanko Tuck full for Cornell. A great vault. She has scored a 9.85 with that vault, and I have a feeling it'll be somewhere around that ballpark. And on floor exercise, Hannah Zebke just capped out her routine as well. Up on the balance beam, Daisy Woodring for Texas Women's. You saw that really difficult switchly, switchly combination. Beautifully done. And we were talking about Daisy earlier with the mission trip and how she's the most confident, best gymnastics she has done. Talk about the best. She has achieved the MIC Woman of the Year in as a graduate student in chemistry with a 4.0. I mean, wow. any one of those things is an impressive feat. And then balancing athletics on top of that, these female athletes are just remarkable in their accomplishments and accolades that they hold. Yeah, and I can't even put into words how difficult it is to be able to balance, like you mentioned, a phenomenal athlete, but on top of that, all these other accolades that she has. Just, they're so important to point out though, because gymnastics isn't forever. They're more than just gymnasts and athletes here. They're, they have so much more to them, so, so, much, so many cool stories and so many things going for them. So it's always cool to hear about those and learn about them too beyond just athletics. Michaela DeFrancisco for vault for Cornell, following Cami Whitaker's 9.625 and on bars, Valandra Brophy for Air Force. And on bars, we saw that Ginger release move. Looked a little conservative and small, but she was able to pull it out and so far, she has a hit routine, ends with that double layout with a slight step forward, but a solid hit for Air Force. And Air Force, Clara Wallace matched Chelsea Boyer's 9.625. And for Texas women's, they are starting off their beam competition very strong with a 9.825 by Emily Six and a 9.8 by Sophie Hernandez. Next up on the beam for Texas women's is Steely King, a senior with a season high of a 9.875. She has struggled with some consistency this year a little bit, but I know if she trusts her training, she'll be capable to go out there and hit for her team. Over on the vault now, Sydney Beers. She's a two-time vault GEC champion, and I know that she's capable of sticking that because she just did at the GEC conferences uh, where she received a 9.9 .9 and was rewarded for that step vault by winning the competition. Over on the floor exercise, Erica Fire, the individual competitor, the junior, with a fourth season high of a 9.85. You can see the bottom left screen on balance beam, really nicely done, front tuck skill. Also, not a skill that you see too often. Very cool skill by Steely King. And over on the bars, Maddie Carlisle for Air Force. 
Sydney Beer has rounded out the Cornell vault lineup with a 9.8. They're finishing their vault rotation with a 48.275. Wow, and we just saw a stick on beam for Steely King and then another one on the bar dismount in the upper right corner as well. So six we are keep saying sticks are contagious, but that seems to be the theme here. <laughs> it sure does seem like that. How exciting these girls are settling into their gymnastics and over on the vault, a huge you talk about wow. stick. Oh my gosh. I mean that is going to be the highest. You can see everyone running Kirsten to congratulate Johnson, her. No way that she has a season high of a 9.825. No chance that she does not yeah. beat that. But come on, judges, please reward her with a 10. I'm flashing my hands up. <laughs> <laughs> We're chanting for a 10 all the way here behind the screen. But that definitely is going to be the highest vault score that we see in this session. I mean, she just dropped into that stick. There are some sticks that seem like, oh, it was too big of a squat, or oh, they had to circle their arms, but wow, I think it, she couldn't have timed that more perfectly. A rock in sand, no movement, no worry that she just nailed that stick. Very excited to, for Kirsten Johnson to round out her all-around competition. You can still see her excitement in the background there, hugging all of her coaches and teammates, and. I love that the Cornell athletes ran up to hug and reward her for that performance. How neat. Right, exactly. That's something that we were talking about earlier. Just cool to see the support and cheering from other teams. I'm eagerly waiting for that score, but as we wait, Ayla McKean on bars for Air Force and Emma Burkleck for Texas Women's on Beam. Erica Byer scores in for the floor exercise a 9.825 so far leading the floor competition for the individuals. Unique hop out of her front toss on the beam for Emma Berkeley. She looked like she was a little off and tried to connect her jump right away, but ended up doing a slight hop. Yeah, I think she was trying to connect on that and just like you mentioned, just slightly off, but was able to stay on the beam, which was extremely impressive because she was very crooked on that. All right, Kirsten Johnson scores in at 9.925. What do you think, Sydney? <laughs> I think that that's so well deserved, and it she beat her season high of a 9.825 by an entire tenth. So that's impressive in itself, and to do it in this competition. I don't think she could have timed it more perfectly. We saw the ball. I think it was just a very well-deserved score. And it doesn't surprise me that she got over a 9-9 at all. Personally, I would have liked to see the 10, but she is a freshman, so we have three years ahead of us. So be sure to keep that name in mind as we go throughout the next few years in NCAA gymnastics, because I think we will I'm see a 10 here. 10 in Kirsten Johnson's accolades to come. Yes, you heard it here first that we are saying in the next couple of years she will get a 10 on the vault. <laughs> if I called it, does that, if we called it, does that get to add a 10 to our accolades? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> on a floor exercise, Kylie City for an individual competitor and Maggie Slife up now rounding out Air Force's bar competition, the anchor. Maggie Slife just has perfect form. And that's something that's really hard to teach. You can see that her feet are perfectly pointed and together, her legs straight. I mean, they do not come apart and that's something that the judges are looking for. And then, wow, finishes with that beautiful dismount to a stick. I expected nothing less though, but that will be a very good score. Man they changed out the mats or something and put like glue all over them but these sticks are <laughs> everywhere this rotation I'm loving it and that's kind of what we mentioned earlier that the more comfortable you get and more of a rhythm that you get in throughout the competition you start to see in a sense just the comfortability breaking out of their shell a little bit but that confidence kind of just continues to rise from what I've seen just throughout these last few hours here Absolutely. Caitlin Hoyland for Texas Women, the anchor 
on Balance Beam up in the top right hand corner, following Steely King's 9.75 and Emma Berklick's 9.6. Unfortunately, Texas women's scores have dropped as the lineup has gone, but Caitlin Hoyland's routine looks solid as ever to round out their lineup. Finishes that routine with another blind landing front fold dismount, gainer front fold, but slight step on that. Just like you mentioned, Annie, a solid routine, and that's exactly what they were looking for. Lee City's floor score in with a 9.825, and Ava Kelly, our next competitor, as an individual, starting off with her first prize. GEC star athlete for two years and being just a sophomore. Lola Sepulveda up next on bars, finalizing her all around competition. Huge. <laughs> yeah, both at the same time, right? Great minds think alike there, but wow, huge to gotcha release move. I'm just calling what I see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. She's going to be looking for a stuck dismount right here. Really great height on that. Again, nicely done. She had too much power, which is, again, a very easy fix, and it's a great problem to have. Remarkable That'll be the reduction. On that event, the way she wound up for those giants and the amplitude she got in her Takacha, it was just like... Powerful. She had so much power. Absolutely. On balance beam, Morgan Price. Beam for her last event for her all around competition here for the sophomore. She has scored a 9.95 on this event. And she actually has the highest score across all HBCU athletes and schools on any event right here. And you can see why, how solid she is. She's been so much fun to watch this entire competition and just the confidence that she has in her gymnastics and the way that she carries herself is so noticeable and really inspiring too. Two time all around qualifier to this event. So nothing new here. She also is the first HBCU gymnast to win all around, hoping to make that two times at this competition right now. Finishing off with that round off, double twist dismount. Thought she was gonna get the stick on that, but slight step, nicely done to finish out her competition for the day. Flight bobbles throughout, so won't be a career high for her but a solid routine to end out the all around competition. And looks like our all around competitors went four for four. So we don't really know where they're gonna land and who's gonna walk away with that title in session one. Alexa Melanson for a USAG individual on the floor exercise. We have scored a 9.825 on this event. You saw the huge two and a half punch front. It looked like her punch was a little bit off going into the front tuck, but she saved and covered that really well. I think it's great too how you mentioned, Annie, that all four all arounders went four for four because I think that's what we expected nearing the end of season, but also it means that they were on some of their best gymnastics, and that's what you want in this friendly competition. You want everyone to be at their best and then to see where each individual lands just makes for the best the best competition right and there's a reason they got here in the first place and they did not disappoint us i mean they qualified with their national qualifying score their nqs so think of it as the average score is dropping the highest and lowest taking scores for both away meets and home meets and they definitely showed up and brought the heat tonight Finishing that forward team with the front handspring, one and a half, front handspring Rudy. 
in price Love on that. the balance beam. Got a 9.725 from Fisk and Lola Sopalveda with a 9.65 from Bridgeport. One final competitor up for the individual is Libby Allen on the floor exercise. She tied the school record, as I mentioned before, with a 9.9. She is a second team, all GEC floor and scholar athlete. So what a better way to finalize this competition than with this athlete on this event right here. How does it feel to be the final competitor of an event when all events are done and you are all eyes on you? I think it's one of the most fun things about the competition, especially on the event of floor. You get to really just showcase your routine, your tumbling, everyone's watching. I think it's just perfect in all sorts of ways. And so I think she's really gonna wanna take the energy from her team and the fans, all eyes on her for this next minute and a half routine she does what whether you're competing at home or away and for a lot of these athletes it's clearly in their away arena you can still captivate the audience by having creative dance and if you're energized and look like you're having fun i know i will get secondhand excitement and feel like i'm having fun <laughs> yeah absolutely and i there's been so many times throughout this competition that i've just been smiling sitting here watching and you probably you can't tell obviously but hopefully you can hear me smiling through through the stream because it's been just a joy to watch all of these hardworking athletes and women who have just put in so much hard work throughout not just this year but every year leading up whether that was club gymnastics or collegiate gymnastics what they do day in and day out is truly in a prime example of being a student athlete. Final salute of the day, Libby Allen, Southern Connecticut, the junior. All eyes on her. <laughs> First pass, that round off that kid's spring, huge double pike. I love that she landed with her chest up, something that the judges are looking at. In for that second coming pass, nicely done. Front layout to front full. Alexa Melanson before her with a 9.775. So far, the highest score for individuals is Ava Kelly with a 9.85 on the floor exercise. Rounding out the end of this meet, last tumbling pass of this session. Huge double tuck was so powerful and she could have gone taken another step she had that much power but great job being able to hold out on that and that beautifully done floor routine put an exclamation point on the meet how exciting and what a fun competition it's been. And now we'll toss it over to the Southern Connecticut State head coach with him discussing what this championship means to him and his team of individuals that we've seen today. USA Gymnastics provides an opportunity for lots of athletes to compete at a championship level. Although there's not enough Division II schools to make up a Division II championship, uh, USA Gymnastics has stepped in for many years and have made that uh, a viable championship for a combination of different schools, Division I, II, III, and also the Ivy Leagues. 
Being a part of USA Gymnastics for over 23 years on both the men and women's side has given me a great sense of pride. This year, I'm here with a relatively young team from Southern Connecticut State University, which is my alma mater. We're excited about the opportunity with such a young team. I'm always happy to be a part of it to represent USA Gymnastics, and we're looking forward to a great competition this weekend. I mean, the USAG National Championships for us as a, an NAIA school, it means that we have an opportunity for postseason, first off. Um, you know, we are not in a conference, so we don't get that experience. And so the young ladies on my team, you know, no one wants to just end with the end of the season and be done. And there's nothing to kind of work towards or look forward to. So they have an opportunity to compete in a postseason, but they also have an opportunity to become national champions and to be all Americans and to get the same kind of uh, recognition. And so the fact that we may not be an NCAA school right now is not gonna hinder them from still being able to be recognized on a national scene. And what a special competition it was. You can see here the Verdius website if you wanna go back and explore more competitions and see all that Verdius has to offer. Feel free to go to verdius.com's webpage where you can see more events like this and all that it has to offer. It is a state-of-the-art innovative platform that offers scoring and scoreboarding live, unlike any other platform right now. You can manage lineups in real time and you can see as scores come in where competitors stand in the competition. Not only the scores, but of course the streaming as you saw here today. It's a great presentation service and it is, uh, if you are interested, feel free to go to verdius.com. You can see here where the fourth rotation events line us up and Texas women's walks away with the lead with a 195.175. They were the number one seed coming into this session, number two seed overall. So not surprised at where they landed. Their statement is let them know that's their team motto. And their only way to achieve goals has been focused on achieving them together as one united and they just showed up and they let us know here today. Yeah, absolutely. Each team did such a great job. I think the competition was really close, but you take a look at Cornell, who really bounced back from an unfortunate first rotation on bars. Think about, you know, if there weren't a couple of those mistakes, it would have been a really close meet between each of those schools. So very well deserved for Air Force and Texas women's as well, but also great job to Cornell for being able to finish, like we mentioned, with an exclamation point and just face the adversity and take it as a really big opportunity to grow. No school was necessarily at their best, but Air Force and Texas women's has an opportunity to tomorrow night and Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern in the finals team rotation to go out there and show what they are made of. I know the Air Force's head coach mentioned that they just haven't put a full meet together yet. They've had individual successes on the events, but to put all four apparatuses in the same day is what they are trying to piece together. And with having felt out the equipment today, tomorrow just might be their chance to shine. I think we will definitely see all of these athletes shine tomorrow and it's gonna be a really close competition then as well. Take a look here at the standings of today's competition. A reminder that on Sunday, the individual finals are being held independently of session one and session two. So the top five competitors on each event will qualify to the Sunday session. Um, no, it's important to note that no more than three athletes per team are allowed in each event. So Kirsten Johnson, 
no surprise taking away the vault title here today with that massive Yurchenko one and a half stuck vault with a 9.925, the casual day's work. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to see what she does on Sunday with that vault and see if she can repeat that. Because if so, I am going to go ahead and call that she might be the vault champion. Absolutely. Moving over on to the bars, a lot of first ties with Gigi Maslow, Morgan Price, and Maggie Slife. You can see the all-around competitor Morgan Price in there, um, all having scored a 9.85. Very impressive bar rotation that we saw today. Yeah, absolutely. A 9.85 is a great score, and I think that they will only continue to get better because like we mentioned earlier, this was the first day of competition, kind of getting your feet wet a little bit, getting a feel for the environment and the equipment. So to be able to come out and get such a great score like that, I think they'll only do even better in the event finals. And then moving over to the balance beam, 9.85. Kylie Green takes the lead from Air Force, followed by her teammate, Clara Wallace, and a whole lot of other 9.825s down the line from Sydney Beers, Michaela Burton, Kirsten Johnson, and Emily Six. But reminder, the top five teams from this session will qualify for that Sunday session with a chance to take the title. And notice that the 9.8 was the lowest score in this lineup, which is crazy because that's such a good score, especially for the make or break event we kept saying balance beam. So just congrats to all of these athletes because these are just fantastic routines and they were very fun to watch. And I know we had some big scores on the floor exercise, capping it off Sydney Beers from Cornell. No surprise with her 9.9 .9 stellar floor performance, followed by another common name, Mike Maggie Slife and Kirsten Johnson. No surprise there as well, capturing a 9.875 with their heart thumping floor routines. Morgan Price also qualifying from Fisk with a 9.85 and Josie Boylan from Cornell with a 9.85 as well. What a fun floor lineups that we saw today. Such fun floor routines. They were all executed so well and just were phenomenal. I, I don't think we expected anything less though. So definitely me and, and went over our expectations, but again, it was so much fun to watch. Absolutely, and what I'm most excited for, the all-around competition, Morgan Price takes the cake with a 39 0.225. She was the eye to watch for that all-around title for session one. And then Kirsten Johnson following it up, leading with that vault score that really helped her achieve that 39.05. Maggie Slice following her from Air Force with a 39.025. All scores above a 39, exactly where you need to be to win that all-around competition. But there is still a session two, so we will take if the we will see if these scores hold throughout tonight's session. Notice just how close they are separated by half a tenth. And those are those tiny little footsteps that we were talking about throughout the competition that make up the difference in the end. So this is just a prime example of that 39.025 to that 39.05, literally half a tenth separates them. So you could see how close the competition was and we're gonna see it again tonight in the next session. You can see here, Texas women is taking the lead and will advance to tomorrow night's session where they will have a chance to compete against Lindenwood, who is the number one seed across all teams, having scored a 197.075. And Texas women's is capable of scoring a 196.275. So there should be a close race if that happens. And then following them also is Air Force, who has scored a 195.65. They were the third seed coming in out of all six teams and second seed coming into this rotation, into this session. And so excited to see them advance and what they have to bring for Saturday night session. Yeah, I think all these teams should just be so proud of the competition that they had today. They all put out great routines and it's very, like we mentioned, 
mentally taxing but also physically and emotionally a roller coaster and they did a great job handling this pressure and really just giving it their all so really looking forward to seeing air force and texas women's again tomorrow night and then seeing who also qualifies later tonight well as some cornells that qualified as individuals for sunday session and congratulations to all those seniors that have put in years of hard work into this sport and we just want to thank you for all that you have done to contribute to this sport um, and we appreciate all that you have done for cornell university And that is all for today's USAG Women's Collegiate National Championship 2024 session number one. Texas Women's takes the lead with Air Force to follow and Cornell coming in third. What a competition today. We saw some great gymnastics, but stay tuned. The weekend is just getting started. Session two is later tonight, as well as team finals tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern. I'm Annie Johnson signing off with Sydney Steve. Thank you for joining us in today's broadcast and we will toss it over to the PA announcers to provide accolades to all of the accomplished athletes from today's competition.